Buenos dias. This is Roddy. We are back with another video. And today, guys, we are in Chichen Itza. We're gonna go see the Mayan ruins. This is the place. This is the history. This is what I was actually looking forward to see. I am very excited. You know, this is the place where the first Spaniards showed up and they see all those, you know, crazy Mayans, you know, slaughtering people and doing all this crazy stuff and and this is it and uh, this is actually the the smell of it this is the part of the jungle that's how this this thing looked which is pretty freaking amazing so wow i never experienced nothing like this i never smelled this jungle like that so this is all brand new to me looks pretty badass the birds i can i hear birds like i never heard before so this is actually really cool See, there's a little thing that says Chichen Itza, Zona Arcaulica. Badass. This is so cool. Yeah, so uh, I'm very excited. We're gonna go see it. I'm kind of st stick with my group. Uh, my group is like about five, six people, very nice ladies I've been talking to, so exciting. In two hours and 20 minutes, two hours, 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 20 but they were just trying to protect what they had left. That's why I see this during the post-classic days, because what you are going to see in a minute there is a post-classic city. And that means it's not the best of them. This is not the Mayan apogee. Right? This is not the time where Mayan people have a calendars or number of system or all their best um, architecture. No. That was back then. This means the collapse. Right. Mm. At this moment, these people already faced wars, droughts, overpopulation, right? The best of them, the best of them. And this is something that European people, Spaniards, about all didn't see, yeah. took place between 200 and 800 after Christ. So when Spaniards came here, European people came here in 1500, they didn't find those powerful uh, societies, you know, uh, opposition, no. Chichen Itza didn't exist anymore, Kobach, Balan. That was already passed. 700 years before. Yep. You know? So what they found here in the 1500 were just the Maya reminiscences, the last part. Just a small little settlements uh, with a peasant or farmer character, but that didn't represent opposition to this conquest. Right. It was kind of. Was no, they were the most famous one, Aztecas, yeah. because they were here at the Spanish arrival. So they are the link through this ancient Mexico mm -hmm. and the modern Mexico. And okay. they put more opposition. They were the ones fighting Cortes. They were the ones actually. They were. The, mm, they they put up a fight. There were some societies that flourished during the post-classic time, and one of them were Aztec. But this would mean that they were more powerful or more important than Mayas, you know? Because everything about Aztec, when we when we talk about Ma about Aztec calendars, about human system in the, in the Aztec society, all this knowledge was taken from this. Right, because Maya people were not a culture, they were a civilization. When we say civilization, we refer to those guys that were able to develop zero of the world. And, they were, and also numeric system, and Maya did it. Chichen Itza! They took this knowledge from some other culture, and think about Maya. Right? So, Aztec, yes, they were a very powerful society, but in the post-classic days. And actually, they didn't last that much. Because we see that these groups was, were born around 1320. 1320, Chichen Itza was already abandoned. Okay? And they just disappeared with this Spanish arrival. In, in 1520, mm. 22, 21, were conquered, were defeated by Cortes and Company. Yeah. Right? yeah, and since, and since then, 
Well, That's where Cortes started. He started yeah. over here and he just moved up. Actually, Cortes mm. came to the Yucatan Peninsula, yep. but he just passed by Tulum Town. Mm. No? He didn't stay here. He was the was third guy. He was the third guy tried. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was. First of all, we had Cordoba, we have Narvaez, mm. you know, Alamino was the first one. Actually. First Alamino, ones, yep. Know? And then Cortes. But he was the first expedition over here. Mm. When he came here, actually, in 1500s, Hernán Cortés realized yeah. that there were people speaking Spanish over here in the Yucatan Peninsula. Yeah. I love the story how Cortés finds this one guy who actually survived the shipwreckage. And he was like the only guy left. And he barely speaks Spanish anymore. You know, they found him over here. I love the story about it, man. He was actually he was actually saved by Cortes. Only one guy left out of like a bunch of people. The whole ship went down and Gonzalo de Guerrero mm. and Jerónimo. Yeah, I love yeah. that story, man. It's yeah, like one of my favorites, man. Actually, yep. Actually, when Hernán Cortes came here, this guy, mm -hmm. Hernán, uh, Gonzalo Guerrero, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Jerónimo de Aguilar. Yeah, you he know? was basically Mayan. He barely speaks Spanish when he came. Actually, they they really look mm -hmm. like a Mayan people because they were now just like a more brown mm -hmm. color with a lot of tattoos and piercing, mm -hmm. you know. So they really look like more uh, Mayan people than Spaniards. Yeah. Actually, Cortez hardly recognized them, you know, just because they spoke in Spanish. Of course, of right. course. Yeah, but they were married. One of them was married here. Yep, yep, yep. That was him. He was like the only guy survived. And all this story, thanks to him, you know, we know all this stuff, actually. Wow, this is beautiful. This is so cool. Nigdy nie myślałem, że w życiu, że będę tutaj i będę tak blisko takiej historii. Coś niesamowitego. Wow. I'm so happy and excited to be here and touch and feel the history and touch those rocks. Wow. Amazing. You know, they said, well, what? If this is a coincidence, why to be a person? Why not another day? So there are two, so there are people that split in two. So the thing is that we don't have evidence about what really happened. And this is a Maya book. But we know some. The echo is a Quetzal sound. And this Quetzal, this is the name of the bird, is a sacred bird for Maya people. Quetzal, 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 Quetzal wow. Yes, that's why, yes, because if you see, at the other side, all around, we have a lot of snake motifs, you know? Because the snake, a feathered snake, this is what we see uh, on this representation, <laughs> is totally associated to fertility, you know? So, but also Quetzal. But you know what happened? If you see the Quetzal flag, flag, it's, an, it's a bird, a very colorful one, with a beautiful long tail that seems to be a little snake flying. So we know that aesthetic of that aesthetic evolved to that. Right, maybe that Quetzal gonna be came later. Right. So we can find that snake everywhere. You can see some produce stone, carving, paintings, you know, jamba, low relief, just for playing the snake, 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 because this is for TV. And actually that yeah, you are watching there, I'm pretty sure you read something about it. It's not just a ceremonial construction. Each time we find this kind of construction, we are, we know that we are right in front of our this home. Because what they are doing here, this civilization, you know, talking in a religious sense, is just trying to represent the way and how they conceive the universe. The square one, because this is a plaza, we can we can appreciate it because of the trees, but, but we are constructing using the on the side, it's in a square shape, okay, representing the, the universe. And this is a deep it's, it's a church. People didn't need it. Okay, they just performed some act that involved people life. Sacrifice. That was a common practice. But also, it's a marker. It's a calendar. Because we have 90 steps, but totally we have 365 steps, which is a Maya calendar. Right? Oh. And on every summer solstice and winter solstice, we would see the snake, but in a shadow. You know? it's, a, it's a long shadow, 22 meters long, in the shape of a snake body. And at the end of this shadow, we have a huge stone that this is a snake head because that was the idea to represent that sounding snake was just arriving the same. And that apparition, that shadow, each time we see it, 
is because the rain days are just starting or finishing. It's totally associated to the mm. rain days. Of course, people, astronomers, architects, mathematicians gave the designs because the only people that could read and write were the one living in this area, not the one that for the first place. religious university. How busy is it in the afternoon? Yes. Oh, yes, but the people living outside didn't know anything about this. They were just farming pieces. They didn't read it and write. They were illiterate people. Like a... So these people using this knowledge with these divine sets let them know that this event of this act were just gods. So, you know. So more like a monastery then. I, well, you could say it well. <laughs> we can say that we haven't changed that much, you know. Yeah, the yeah, knowledge yeah, yeah. Power, you know, and this, and this guy just this power to control. You know, it's the same thing in like uh, even like in Europe, right? Like, uh, they... Zapach powietrza tej dżungli tutaj jest wow. The smell. I never smelled jungle like that before, so wow. And I mentioned being here and knowing there was a thousand people got sacrificed and died. Thousands of people die here, you know, every year to it's just crazy. Amazing. Very awesome. Very awesome. Love it. Love it. You wanna use a light this part of the temple? But because the corners, you can see the corners, okay? Yeah. That's gonna make an, a little effect that's gonna be visible on that side. If you come here with me, you can see that we yeah, have a little door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can see? Yeah. Alright, because the corners, because the corners, a shadow gonna be cast exactly on that wall. You can see the wall? Ah. Yeah. The vertical wall, initially 22 meters. This is with... with this is we, where we would see that shadow in the shape of a snake. And you can see from here those the stone in the shape of a snake head. You see? Yeah. So that is a, that is what they mean, you know? It's a it's a kukulkan. Kukulkan, the feather snake, the seven and fertilizing. The land. And that happened every summer solstice, winter solstice, you know, every night as well. So that that temple involved a lot of math and and a really good architecture, you know. So this is what we see. So it's not just a temple. Not a culture. Oh no 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 no. 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 This, 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 this architect these architects were just very advanced societies. We actually got kind of lucky with the weather. There's no sun, huh? We actually I got lucky you. with this you little shade. Get, yeah, you could. We we got lucky, yeah. yeah. I see it coming out a little bit right now. I'm like, ooh, stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay here, and then we're gonna move that way to see the bull court. But you know, I didn't mention it, but inside there there is something else. Inside, okay? mm -hmm. Because what you are watching here is just the last external layer. There are three more, or there are two more constructions just down there. Yeah, actually there are three pyramids, but we are watching just the last one. But there are two more. Oh, actually there are two more. There are the first one, the second one with a temple like the one up there, and the entrance is the little door you see. Okay, actually inside, because that entrance you are watching right now there, they use re they discover it at one door. In the 30s, in the 80s, archaeologists were just excavating Chichen Itza, restoring and just dynamite. Let alone show a guy from France. He used dynamite and discovered that there was a stairs guri in there. He just excavated and followed it all the way up and found a temple, a chamber with a with a big stone in the shape of a jaguar painted in red colors right inside. Actually, before 2004, before it became a world heritage, <coughs> everybody was allowed to go on top and go in there as well. You know, so 2004 was the last time. And, even, and that's, well, if we were thinking about if they were going to reopen it, no, because in 2000, uh, 2007 it became one we said, you know, that's what happened. So they didn't reopen it. But it's possible, it's possible to go to the second chapter, but not to the first one. We know that it's there because archaeologists, or these people use a very specific technology like the sonars. The lidar, so the lidar, right? solar? like a lighter, yeah, like yeah. a sonar, oh, like yeah, a yeah. sonar, and they could see that there are three, three bodies. There. I mean, three constructions. And all these pyramids, they are just on top of a huge foundation. You know, we have a huge platform just underneath, 
you know, it's a huge one, like a, I don't know, like a maybe 80 meters, you know, by side, and um, five meters in height or four meters high, you know, and right underneath, at the same direction, there is a cenote. So they had a cenote, they just made a foundation, and they put them on. This is what we have. And yes, this it's is perfect weather because there's no sun. The sun is hidden right now, so it's awesome. Can I imagine over here if it was like sun shining and 30 Celsius? So I'm glad I should use a little. This is perfect weather right now. Everybody used to get together in this hill because the population participated of these sacred events. And on those days, sacrifice took place because this was a common practice, you know? Of course, we, are, we want. The Mayan world is not limited just to human sacrifice. Because there are so many things that they can move, you know, having that similar system that we have, right? Even they have not uh, that advanced technology such as uh, metals or rough animals, because when European people came here, people used to live as a neolithic society, using only woods and stones, you know, not even wheels, metals, or horses, no, 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 everything was just, they used to carry everything on their back, back you know, with that rope attached on their forehead, they used to move each rock, from the quarters to this place, but of course they use a slave. They use slave because they practice in slavery. Because I didn't mention it, but Mayan people were not societies conforming uh, empires, but more like autonomous city state, living always in a constant war, first, you know, fighting, fighting, conquering each other, devastating a huge extension of land as well. Also, they cause uh, some some uh, disaster, an ecological disaster. Also, they did it, you know. But yes, so. This is what, uh, what uh, this is why Chichen Itza became one of the new seven movies because this is a calendar that we are watching. Right? You, you just, and this uh, is made out of like volcanic rock, or this is. Uh... Thank you. You saw the jungle. It's mm -hmm. not that high. It's 20 meters, 22 meters, mm -hmm. because it's not fertile land because we have rock. Mm -hmm. Yucatan Peninsula, practically 80% of the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is an area of 80,000 square yeah, kilometers. It was all jungle it's just rock. rock. It's just in a huge Gruyere cheese, mm -hmm. and everything just grows on top. So we don't have a humus, we don't have a fertile land. No, if you want to plant something, we have to slash, we have to cook them all. We have to cook this jungle. Mm -hmm. fuera. You know, we burn it, and yeah. the ashes the ashes are the ones that are going to fertilize everything. Fertilize, yeah. You know? And people can plow with machine. No, no. They have to. We have to work with pointy stick, looking for crack and fissure because it's just limestone. This is limestone, limestone. and you don't have to look for it far away. No, we are mm. just surrounded by this. We are just surrounded. I mean, we are mm. on the rock. You know, rock. everything grows on the rock. Everything. Gotcha. Gotcha. So there are everything, and no metals to shape this limestone. Yeah. So the hardest thing at this time. Yeah. was the obsidian. I know for a fact in Yucatan, Spanish did not find any gold was from here. All the gold that they, they had, it was basically from somewhere else, was traded from somewhere else. There was no gold Man. here in the whole thing at all. Yeah. The at little all. gold they found here, because mm. there were a little gold, a little mm -hmm. gold. This is something that they, these people trade with. They were all trade from somewhere society. else with different, with different cultures, yep. Yep. I've read that they, they found a bunch of uh, statue there. Mm -hmm. That is one up there too. Actually, when they made it, they put it inside. Oh, okay. The same group that made it put it inside. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. you know, it's not that Chichen Itza was reoccupied after the abandonment and people came in here and just put it in there. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, okay, this okay. is contemporary to the city. You know, and we know that's because the architecture style we see from both. Sometimes we find, uh, for example, in Chichen Itza, we have found styles coming from the west side that we call Peten or Book or Chenes. So we know those people re-enter the city once was abandoned. So we can distinguish between some modifications that belong to different periods. Mm -hmm. But for example, this statue, this carving, you know, it belong, belong to the same period. Everything you see here, we don't know if this was first than this one, or vice versa, okay? but we know that corresponds to the same period. All right? So yes, this is what we have inside. So when they put the ceremonies, this priest, the Ahau King, there's a name given to the most important political figure. You know, Ahau King or, or we need a we need a we need a Ahau King. He used to just he used to sacrifice prisoners. Ah. But they didn't sacrifice any prisoners. Yep. You know, common people. They didn't discriminate. They see white guys, Spaniards. They did it. Oh, let's they go. They were the first five. First five guys, man. Boom. You know. You, you, you know that they. You know that people. That, you know this. This. I later. I later realized that they didn't kill common people. 
Because they were not considered to be the best owners. Mm -hmm. That is not fake. Like, you know? They sacrificed the rich. They sacrificed it. I told you. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? <laughs> over there and took people from some other villages. Oh, wow. And the common people were for this construction yep. for working. Because it was a really hard one. But the most important, when I'm talking about like high rank militants, you know, princes, queens, queens, kings, whatever. They were the most important. So that was actually better. That was actually better sacrifice. See? Yep. And this is not all, because you're going to read many things about what Aztec people, what Aztec people did in Central Mexico. Because we have a lot of writing, you know, that the Spaniards left about people, sac thousand yeah. people being sacrificed, or how many people being sacrificed in a day. We can prove with that, yep. you know. But we know that the Spaniards need to justify the conquest as well. People first, in Cenotes, second, virgin. I will tell you something, the cenotes, since the cenotes are the only sort of drinkable water, that's about killing people in there, it's just insane. Drink their water. All right? <laughs> and even more if the cenotes are connected to the ground, All right? So, they, so we have a huge river system, you know, a huge river network just underneath, and people have in there doesn't seem so logical. <laughs> so no, now, second, virgin people. You know that, you know that, and you know that. It's impossible so far. As far as I know, we can we can know if girls were virgins five hundred years, yeah. thousand years. Yeah. But you know what happened? That when we have a lack of truth, we have a lot of meaning. Like yes, and that is a good business as well. So there is a cenote, yes, but you know what happened with Chichen Itza right after it was abandoned in 1194? People came. Also, European people came here. You and me, neither me, don't know what they did. They removed a stone, they removed bone, mm -hmm. they used to throw many things into the cenote, and later in 1950, archaeologists would argue that people were sacrificed there because. The people car. remain were found, so, but we don't know who put it there. If they really were sacrificed there, so just let's be careful with that. Okay? Could they tell how old those let's remains go by the shady were? Area. Were they able to tell how old the bones were that they found? The, so they found they found the bones in the in there. In how those, old were those sinkholes, right? The the bones, you mean? The ones that they found. The oh, they were old bones from this uh, from this period. Okay, you know, but you know what happened? Alright, sun is coming out to kick our asses now. We were, we were in good shape for a little while, but now it's it's gonna get rough right now. That's why they do this first and then swimming next, because you're gonna be so happy to jump to the pool. Actually, it's a pyramid and there is one more construction where human people were found after they were but have, we, have we found any of the tombs of like important? Amazing. Yeah, all this stuff, wow. Snakes on the top, faces over here. Wow, badass. Go back to our tour guy, he's talking pretty good. So Michael Charles is a beautiful character that is portraying uh, a person that seems to be a guy just handling a, like, a, like a spacecraft or something like that. I've seen the picture, yeah, it's like the, he's, he's like sitting down there. with the... Yeah. Uh, so that's the most famous tomb found in Palenque, Chiapas, Mexico. And they found it at random because when the, the pyramid was found in 1850, Archaeologists are sure that it was totally solid, like the one here. They didn't realize that was hollow one, you know. But that, that's took place until 100 years later that another archaeologist were working in there. I mean, on top, and found a little lead, a little entrance to the to the tomb. Okay, so that tomb was found in 1953. So, but the body there. This one, right? That's Palen. Oh, crazy. Crazy. Which one? It's like this. Oh. More or less. Uh, this is the tombstone, wow. and so people think that's that this is like a spaceship. Like wow! And that's alien all the people. alien stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Once they see that, the whole thing started. That's the alien that made everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cougars. Oh. Yes. Hola, hola, how are 
Hola, hola, ¿cómo estás? Excelente. Very cool. The last one. Wow, badass. <laughs> we come back maybe. But right now we got a tour guide. We gotta catch up with our tour guide. Hello. <laughs> yes. Jak tam polska grupa, spoko? Polacy są wszędzie. Every encryption was thought to be used something talking about astronomical events. So in 1952, so 100 years after this Mayan discovery, you know, in 1952, a person, one boy, could interpret part of this Mayan writing, you know? And he just killed that romantic idea about Mayas as a peaceful society. And told you that Mayan people also were like a warlike people fighting always and laboring and all those writing or big monuments mentioning something that's true mentioning something but just mentioning military alliance weddings you know conquest if you want you know, everything less economical events right so but my people is in a really old society that's been here for practically two thousand years so this is the stone you show this picture in the film, okay, up there, up there. Mm. And this is not an, uh, a style coming from the Maya era, but from the There is an, a city at the northern part of Mexico, it's named is Tula, Hidalgo. You could find, you could see a lot of uh, Chuck Moles, that name given to this system. You know, Chuck Moles means a powerful clothes or red showers, and that was used for depositing people's or human organs such as heart, for example. This is what we know about that. We don't know where where those sculptures are coming from. We have found a lot of them in Mexico City, but also at the northern part of Mexico, Michoacán. You could see them. So we don't know its origin, to be honest. Right? So this is the Chacmol, but it's not a Maya and tradition. Right? And then we have that platform, and that is really interesting. Let me just tell you something about the platform, and then we continue to the board. You can see that we have some carvings over here depicting some uh, eagles and showers. You can see the showers is embedded. There are some niches embedded in the wall, right? Um, you can see the carvings very well restored. Actually, these two animals. Eagles and chowers. Look at this iguana and sitting over there, that's so and cool. And also iguanas. Eagles, chowers and iguanas. Mm -hmm. ah. Right there, big as iguana sitting on the stone. Nice. Okay. You, you are watching your walking taco, amigos. Yep. Our lunch is one of the iguanas today. Paquito. <laughs> I will tell you, eh? I will tell you taco. You know that this society is before just to practice the practice of but with Chichen Itza, everything's gonna change. Cool iguana, just chilling, sunbathing. Right, so this is a platform for maybe rituals, announcing, important announcing, dancing, and, you know, uh, oh well, that's the idea. Okay. And then we have another one, which is another side. This is just a platform completely just covered with cool carvings because people used to exhibit uh, people here. So. You know, actually we know that these guys just to impale people's heads some manner to be executed. So when we wonder why they did it, well, it could be some manner to intimidate, you know, it's in a method to rule as well, you know, to let, to let them know they were the most powerful groups. Yeah. Who would mess with against yeah. Chichimitsa, you know? You're walking in, in, there's a bunch of heads running around it, you'd be yeah, like, you, you let me, you yeah. But this is not Show the main tradition. This is, uh, once again, this is an element or a tradition coming from Nahual culture, Mexico, not mm -hmm. here, all right? So this is a platform of the schools. It's not a square one, but in a T shape. And it's just totally covered by schools carvings, okay? So it's just for heads exhibition. No, this is what we know about. And you can see also the protruding stones on the corners. Also here, 
You can see the balustrade with some lines, carvings depicting feathers. So they are just representing the feather snake Kukulkan. Mm. That is what we see here. Now let's go to the ball. Let's continue this way. Amazing. Badass. Wow. Wow. Jó alatt, ami ott van, alatt és fölötte, az meg az alvilágot, a rosszabb, vagy a sötétséget jelkül az épület. Ez, ez az épület igazából már része annak a focipályának, amit majd mindjárt megmutatok, hogy mondom, mindjárt meg tudjuk nézni. És oldalt vannak ilyen lépcsőkok, hogy nézték a meccsalat, a másik oldalokat, ami igazából igazán fontos itt ebben a lépületben, közelebb megyünk. Emlékeztek, hogy mondtad Almó, hogy volt egy kis piramis, abban meg benn volt egy ilyen kis jaguár. Annak itt van egy vagy másolata, vagy egy nagyon hasonló. Jaj, jaj. Azt mindjárt meg is mondtad. Jaj, jaj. Chuchanitsa. Victoria's been singing one. Oh yeah? Okay. They used to watch an absurd game from those angles, bending the royalty for the most prominent people, the principal ones that have access to those two chambers to see the game, you know? The rest of the walls and the rest of the area were populated or uh, uh, the rest of the people were oh, yeah. watching yeah, yeah. standing yeah, kind of, sort of. Like, you, you start the classes are refining that talent you already have. You have to have new instruments and you can build on that certain thing. Anyone can do it, you just need to just keep the start with you know, a different inherent ability. Exactly. Let me take you to the shady area. Boisko, jak boisko. Tylko że. So cool. Let me follow our tour guide. Thank you for stopping in the shade. Perfect. Yes. Those are the expensive seats. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, the exact. That's where Taylor Swift watches the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that it would be possible to pass a ball through those stones before yeah. rings? I guess. Not even. Maybe three kilograms. Wow. And you can't use your hands, right? Neither feet. So just your side. Hips, 
shoulders, elbows, and knees. It would be pretty hard, I feel like. Talk about practice. <laughs> Mucho no, practice. Know. You know what it's almost impossible. You know what happened? That you need to see first. Is this the standard size, the real size, the conventional size? No. Okay. If you see all the other ones, all the other ball courts in Meso in the Mayo are just five times smaller than this one. And actually these vertical walls, you know, on the other ones are slope ones. So you could not and get close to the stick the rings, but not here because the rings are really high and it's very vertical. But not at the other ones, right? The other ones present just 20 meters. This is 100. I'm trying to use your legs, I'm trying to use your hands, and you have to get a ball through that hole. It's crazy. Why different? All the other societies practice a centralized government. Chichen Itza to form a Congress. All the other ones, each time they just settle down, make square shaped plazas because, in a religious sense, they are separate. But the plazas were just free, empty it's in the middle. Chichen Itza set a bit in the middle. All the other societies just to worship Venus as a enemy star because it's totally related to the Venus cycle. Chichen Itza believed that the Venus All the other ones had ball cores five times. Chichen Itza is the only one. With this. So they're basically like Texas, everything yeah. bigger and better. Uh, exacto mundo. <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? It's like Texas, Texas. Uh, Texas uh, yeah. right. Everything bigger so and better. They were coming from Texas. Right? <laughs> yeah. Texicanos building. Yeah, yes, yeah, you, you, you're right. You know, this is what happened. They always making the deposit of something like a more. Yeah, they want to show more power. They want to show we are the best. We got the biggest. We got the. And they amazing. were really powerful societies. You know that before Chichen Itza, the last powerful city state in the Yucatan Peninsula was Cobá. Mm -hmm. And you know that was defeated by this place. Yes, Chichen Itza before this, before this place no? went to Cobá. Boom. Really? Of course, Chichen Itza does not know what to it was a practically a weak society. I won't say that was an easy prey, you know, because it was a really great war that lasted years. You know, that's the concern right that they're going down. So, but Chichen Itza at the end just conquered. And Cuba was abandoned at the end of the 10th century. And Chichen Itza, when I emerged as the <laughs> power. They just left them. They let people know they were not powerful. Not because they spoke. We don't know they play. There are eight ball courts in each team. Eight. We can see the one, but there are eight. All of them this side. But this one. But this is the this is the this is for the big one. This is for the big one. So we don't know they really play. Now when you find the other ones later on we are going to see a few of them in Cobar. They do not present this. Algos. They don't present this <laughs> And we know that we're not games. It's not a public activity. It's not a looting activity. It's not a You know, people talk that God used to fight very often. Every 52 years. God both up and down because they consider the universe divided in three main levels. So there are God up and down. You know, always fighting. We're in between. We haven't changed like the Genesis in the Bible. You know, always fighting. You know, God fighting because us. You know. So they fight as well. So, and they represent that that external struggle here with these guys. Really. And they sacrifice. It's a matter to fit them, to strengthen them. It's a matter to win this battle because it's not that would be the end of the battle. That's why they are just starting people because they fight to fit them. And the moment they take a piece of this food, it's like a, today the churches, the Catholic, you know, what we do. Heading to the central park and seven more heading to the central park. All of them are in profile. If you see people in front side you, they are not mortal. They are gods. Okay, they represent people in profile. So we have people. Six different There is a guy there, right at the middle, mm -hmm. straight right in front of me, on a kneeling position. Mm -hmm. He's not the stand. The murals to the right are a reflection of the murals to the left. Mm. Los murales de la derecha son una reflexión de los murales de la izquierda. The murals to the left are a reflection.
reflection of the morals to the right. Los de la izquierda son una reflexión de los morales a la derecha. Okay? It's like a kind of mirror. Es una especie de espejo. Acérquense, chicos, por favor, come closer. Okay, another person in front. That is just holding Muy bien. His voice in the other side, we can see Actually, the wings. The Del otro lado, podemos ver los anillos. Like so this panel you see here is going to be repeated right in front at the middle on the other side. We have six panels, the same day. And each time you see cities, sometimes they are very well preserved and we can appreciate these guys. Or this is zines. You know? this is it. But you can see all these people with a beautiful outfits, okay, very well dressed with a fine cloth. And they don't seem to be snake. They are not wearing loin cloth or something, but a beautiful ornament piercing in their ears. Most beautiful headdresses, a beautiful headdress. The representation is super clear. I think the representation is very clear. So just for you to know, and this is a snake. You see, it's a snake. Yes, the snake is the main economic in Chichen Yep. Cuckoo, the feather snake. If you go to Mexico City, you're going to find the same snake but under, the but under a different name. Quetzalcoatl, you say. Quetzalcoatl, feather snake. If we move to Guatemala, we will find we will find the same snake. But no Quetzalcoatl, no Cuculcan, but Gucumat, the same. The same snake. You know, but everywhere. So the different cultures have a different name for the same. Mm -hmm. yep. But the same color, but, but the same symbol. Yeah, Revo like a fertility. So fertility. Quetzal qual, that's the Aztec, right? Yeah, it's a Nahuatl. Okay. Well, actually, it's a Nahuatl, it's a Nahuatl language. Okay. You know, but yes, culture belongs to the Nahuatl family. Yeah. Yeah. Central Mexico. Yeah, Central Mexico. Because I say Quetzal qual with it. You guys, but like, wow, I'm really loving it. That was amazing. And just fantastic, just fantastic. So. Uh, I will talk to you guys next video and uh, this is it for Chichen Itza for our you know for our Mayan Empire and um, Roddy uh, will talk to you guys next video uh, I'm out